Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're going over several science stories, solar forcing twice, pre-earthquake signals, the difficulty of isolating individual disaster layers in the sediment. But we're starting with space weather, a look ahead, and a quick look back to yesterday. This is the last 24 hours on our star, pretty quiet. Solar flaring has dropped out and stayed there. Solar wind is still amplified, but geomagnetic disturbances are pretty minimal this morning, minor instability. We do have things to eye in the coming days. First of all, looks like the expanse of this coronal hole is considerable. Looks like it expands back and northward. It's the return of that monster from a couple weeks ago. At the limb, we also see bright coronal activity, which means we likely have some more significant active region sunspots on the way. Helioseismology from SDO confirms that. Enjoy a couple days of quiet here. They're coming. Now going back to yesterday's sky anomaly, we now have a time lapse and a bit of a sigh of relief. Looks much more like a rocket launch now, Chinese satellite deployment. I'm going to leave it there because if it was an L-shell surge, we've only got a couple of weeks left and that's not long enough. So yeah, rocket launch. Let's go to solar forcing. Excellent look here on the tag team effort of Arctic Oscillation and solar forcing to control temperature variability in China. By the way, Arctic Oscillation is forced by the sun, so this paper is kind of saying solar forcing and solar forcing impacts those temperatures directly and indirectly. Similar story here from the American Meteorological Society. Short term, like sub-hourly minute scale forcing of diurnal warm layer stratification in the ocean driven entirely by the sun and local winds. Local winds are also driven by the sun via the global electric circuit. A double-double here to kick off the science news. And an excellent look back here at the great 2008 China quake killed a lot of people. The iridescent clouds above the epicenter have now been tied to anomalous electric field activity in the minutes before the earthquake. Unlike the other pre-earthquake signals, this one is most noticeable to the human eye. Last but not least, a good example of how 99% of samples show only a fraction of the excursions, the disaster cycles. This one nails several recent ones, but maybe not the right ones. They believe they've got Helena Poly, Mono Lake, and Lachamp number two. Looks like they might be nailing Lake Mungo or Michoacan with one of those first two. And that's the entire field of this science, slight adjustments and discrepancies. It's why it's taking so long for scientists to fully appreciate the cyclical predictive nature of the data and what's about to happen to our planet again now. Folks, yesterday's pole shift conference at Observer Ranch was epic. Not only is science filling in every hole of the story, its elegance is beyond almost every beautiful thing I've ever known, and I'm getting really good at telling that story. Disaster conferences, prepper days, get out here and shake my hand. We'd love to see you. Observer Ranch, ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear, be safe everyone.